in our American Family segment, what's your child eating for lunch at the cafeteria today? Is junk food on the menu? Well, two moms in New York got fed up with all the junk food in school cafeterias. And you know what? They decided to do something about it. They formed a group. They call themselves Two Angry Moms to find healthy alternatives to help other parents demand a change. They even made a film about their quest. Here's a look. I don't even know what kind of dyes that are, but food doesn't come in that color, you know that. The Snapple iced tea, not only does it have lots of high fructose corn syrup, but it has caffeine. And the last right. thing... We want to give these kids caffeine. Yeah. <laughs> Dry chicken, I think that probably says spice underneath there. Rendered chicken fat, natural flavorings, mono and diglycerides. None of this is food. Do you get whole sweet potatoes in? Ever? When you say whole, yeah. fresh, no. Yeah. Even the government doesn't get this clearly. The second ingredient, first ingredient is peanuts, the second ingredient is dextrose, which is sugar. Salt, sugar, sodium phosphates, this one I can't even pronounce, I'm not even going to try to. Real eye opener, isn't it? And the two angry moms, as they call themselves, join us. They are Amy Califa a filmmaker and mother of two, and Dr. Susan Rubin is a nutritionist and mother of three. And by the way, by the way, all their children, they bring their own lunches to school. Background, Brown bag, background. Yes, all right, ladies, this is a classic case of I'm angry and I'm not going to take it anymore. Absolutely. Why are you so angry? You know, as a dentist, I was so frustrated when my kids went off to public school and, and started bringing home candy and all sorts of stuff. As a dentist, I was completely offended. So I got involved in my local PTA nutrition committee and started trying to do something about it. Ten years later, I actually went outside of the system, formed a coalition of health care professionals, mm -hmm. educators, and concerned parents, and now the wave of change is really starting to take place. But it took a, a bit of time. Weren't you even like banned at one point from your child's yeah. school cafeteria? I was. The district created a policy so that in order to for me to go to the cafeteria, I'd have to check in with the principal and the food service uh -huh. manager. But really, one of the things we really want to encourage parents is to go to their cafeterias and see what their kids are eating for lunch. Yeah, see for themselves Absolutely. what they're eating. Yeah. Amy, it's really, the documentary is such an eye-opener, and you go all across the country. And there are some success stories. You are seeing some schools that are doing well. Absolutely. And, and one of the things I really wanted to show in the film was some inspiring stories. We went to Berkeley, California where there's probably the most famous school system chef Ann Cooper has really completely turned around mm -hmm. the food there she's got a seasonal menu she's even including a lot of organic ingredients and she's doing all this on a public school budget so it's a wonderful example it shows that it can be done it can be done and we also went down uh, to Southern California on the edge of the desert in Riverside where they've got a salad bar program they're using uh, produce from the local farmer's market, and it's so popular that even the teachers and staff are eating at the salad bar, and they're actually making money on their salad bar. Are they program. really? At a school, off a salad bar? At a school. It's just, it's wonderful. So what can parents do if they have concerns about the nutrition that their child is receiving at, at school? Well, the good news is that this year there is a new federally mandated wellness legislation so that every school district has to have a wellness policy that has to do with food and health in a school district so parents can get involved and get involved with forming what goes on that policy. Well you know a lot of moms and some fathers too they like to bake cupcakes when it's a birthday. You know that's a big thing at schools and the parents make the cupcakes and they bring them to school. Uh, so what's going to happen there because there are a lot of moms and dads who cook who they want to be able to cook what they want to what, what, what they want to bring to school. Well, you know, the cupcake seems to be this lightning rod for so many people. Um, some districts have banned cupcakes outright, and other districts are fighting to keep them. And, you know, there is a happy medium. Um, I brought an example today. Oh, a delicious example, I yes. might say. So this, what is The smaller cupcakes there mm -hmm. that you're seeing are, are much more appropriate for um, a child's, you know, party snack. There are also no trans fats in those smaller cupcakes, all ingredients that you could actually read with a third grade reading level. <laughs> um, the bigger ones are a little, you know, a color not found in nature and um, loaded with trans fats. You can see how they're not melting on the set here. Right, and the other, other ones, ones are. Um, so I really do think you can have your cupcake and eat it too, but it's not every day. It's maybe once a month you have a party. Teachers know sugar has a huge impact on children's behavior, so maybe you want to have that party at the end of the day. All you're asking for is a healthy alternative. Have healthy alternatives, get the junk out, and use fresh products. Really uh, raise the quality of the food because our, our kids are worth it. They are. Amy and Susan, thank you very much. And Chris has already, you know, come over here trying to get, that's his fingerprint right there in that there cupcake. We appreciate it very much. And to find out more about Two Angry Mobs and their film, go to our website at abcnews.com.